Oh, my name is Dr. Adam Shedokovsky and I'm a research analyst at COSAC Kadara Securities. Today we'll be discussing stock valuation. Firstly, I'll be going through some of the known models and then we'll be introducing the COSAC valuation model. Finally, we'll be looking at how all of these models perform when applied to ASX 20. COSEC does not take into account the investment objective, financial situation and advisory needs of any particular person, nor does the information provided constitute investment advice. For more information, visit COSEC.com.au. Let's start by looking at a couple of typical questions related to investing. Should I buy or should I sell? What is the right price of buying a stock? And finally, when is it time to buy and when is it time to sell a stock? All of these questions have at least one thing in common. Stock valuation is a tool that can help answer these questions. So what is stock valuation? Well, stock valuation is the process of estimating a fair value of a stock. Sometimes we also call that the intrinsic value of a stock. Think about it this way. When you buy a share, you become a part owner of a company and that ownership gives you certain benefits. Among other things, you have a claim to parts of profits of the company. Ask yourself this. What is the monetary value of all of the benefits, current and future, associated with this ownership? That is the fair value of the stock that you have purchased. Let me just say a little bit about how we find the intrinsic value of a stock. So in essence, it's really all about having the relevant company data and a relevant model that we can apply this data to. We will be presenting various models throughout this presentation, including our own, and apply them to the stocks on ASX 20. Here we see what kind of stock valuation models are used in analytical reports, sorted according to popularity. The two most common models are the discounted cash flow model and the market approach model. Both have a wide level of applicability and are relatively simple to use. For completeness, I will briefly talk about all of the models listed here. Let's start with the discounted cash flow model. The main driver in this model is income stream. More specifically, we look at free cash flows generated by the company in the future, and we find the present value of all of these cash flows. Cash flow is a technical term, but it just means money left over after paying cash cost of running the business and growing the business. So at least in theory, that money could be paid out to the shareholders. The model listed here really has two parts. The first n terms in the formula, where the company grows at a higher rate, and then a final part, where the company slows down. While this model can be appropriate for companies with positive and steadily growing cash flows, it is very sensitive to changes in cash flow. Even worse, if cash flows are negative and without any sign of improvement, then this model might produce a negative intrinsic value. The next model is the market approach. Here we estimate the value of a company by comparing it to a similar company that recently has been involved in acquisition. This is really an exercise in benchmarking. Of course, the two companies we are comparing are not identical. So additionally, we use multipliers to evaluate the company of interest. The two most common multipliers are price to earning and price to book value. The next model is the book value and return on equity model. Here, the main drivers are book value and return on equity. So let me explain these two terms. Shareholders are entitled to a certain amount of money placed in the company that is called equity. So even though the money might have been spent on something, at least on paper, that's what they're entitled to. So for example, if there is $1 million in equity in a company and there is 100,000 shared issued, then the book value of one share is $10. If a company earns profits of $100,000 in a year and there is still $1 million of equity in the company, then the return on equity is 10%. Typically, companies have a return on equity below 10%, while book value depends a lot on company type. The model here tries to estimate how much the book value is growing over time and then discount that growth of book value to present and also take into account how dividends are being paid out to shareholders for an overall intrinsic value of a share. This is by far the simplest model and performs best when applied to mature companies with moderate return on equity and solid dividends. Being such a simple model, it has a number of shortcomings. For example, 
If a company is not paying any dividends, then this model does not assign any value to the company and sets the intrinsic value to zero. The next two models are the NAV approach and the liquidation approach. Both models aim to estimate the net asset value of the company by subtracting liabilities from total assets. However, there is a difference. The NAV approach estimates the fair value of all of the assets in the company, and in contrast to this, the liquidation approach assumes that the company could be liquidated in the immediate future. This means, for example, that the intangible assets are not included, and only the net realizable value is computed. Let's now have a look at the residual income valuation model. Here, the main drivers are book value and return on equity. The intrinsic value is computed by taking the book value and add the present value of all future residual income. So what is residual income? Well, that's simply the net profit a company has minus the dollar value of the cost of having equity in a company. The residual income valuation model primarily applies to company with significant equity. Some of its shortcomings come from its dependence on book value and more seriously, the way it depends on return on equity. So for example, if the required return on equity consistently exceeds the return on equity, then the intrinsic value of the stock can turn negative. We have looked at several classical models and the question becomes, is there a way to make a better model? We are excited to introduce the COSEC valuation model that we believe outperforms the other models we already discussed. So now let's talk a little bit about the COSEC valuation model. The main idea is to use more metrics as a part of our valuation. We do this because we want to take all of the company's different facets into consideration. Some of the metrics we use are dividend growth, earning per share growth, book value growth, free cash flow growth, revenue growth, and operating income growth. These indicate how well a company is growing. Then we have metrics such as dividend payout, earning per share, book value, free cash flow, return on equity, and operating income, showing how the company is positioned right now. Combining all of these, we get an estimate of the intrinsic value of the stock using the COSEC valuation model. We are now ready to look at some examples and we will be looking at the stocks on the ASX 20. That is the 20 biggest companies in Australia according to market cap. Here, we have the performance of the first 10 ASX 20 companies. Before looking at the numbers, let me briefly mention how these numbers are computed. The first model is solely based on a few key metrics. Then we have the residual income model and the discounted cash flow model that require estimates of future free cash flow and future equity capital. These are essentially computed automatically by taking the company metrics and using linear regression to adjust the future values so they gradually tend toward a perpetuity growth rate. Finally, we have the COSEC valuation model that is a more elaborate version considering a broader range of company metrics. Let's now look at the numbers. We notice that the first three models are very simple to an extent that the intrinsic value sometimes becomes zero or even negative. As mentioned, this happens, for example, if a company has a lot of negative cash flows or if dividend payments continue to exceed earnings. The COSEC valuation model is much more robust and we see how it outperforms the other simpler models. Finally, we have the last 10 stocks on ASX 20. Again, looking at the numbers, we see how the COSEC valuation model is outperforming all of the other models. In summary, firstly we look at the six classical stock valuation models and then we presented our COSEC valuation model. We compared the performance by looking at all the stocks on ASX20. The focus was automated valuation where future performance is forecasted by extrapolation on past performance. In conclusion, we saw that our model outperformed the existing models, providing you with additional tools to make more informed financial decisions. My name is Dr. Adam Sherokovsky, and this presentation was brought to you by Kozak Kadari Securities.